Hey guys, Jonathan Farmer here with OPST, and we're going to be doing a little, whatever you want to call it, you want to call it a comeback fly, you want to call it a summer steelhead fly, a fall steelhead fly, it's kind of an all around uh, one that I kind of have a tendency to keep in my box um, from you're really August in Alaska uh, all the way through my season and um, I fish this thing in trout colors and, and all sorts of stuff. But we're going to be doing a red and black version of the Avenger today. This is a already prepped 20 millimeter OPST intruder shank. I've got medium brass dumbbell eyes on here. Uh, OPST intruder wire with a size 3 OPST hook. And I'm just going to set that off to the side. I've got a little magnet on the top, which really helps uh, to keep from not stabbing yourself over and over and over again. Um, you can pick those up at a hardware store or whatever. Anyway, uh, the materials that we're going to use in this fly, uh, this is chenille. Uh, this is orange. This is an orange chenille. Um, and then we're going to use Angora Goat and some Kraken Dub, and some OPST Ostrich, and Silly Legs, and some Rabbit. This is going to be a two dubbing loop fly, but we'll explain why in a moment. We're going to get right into it. So we're going to tie in our chenille, and we're going to just make a little bump here in the back. It's about five, six wraps. That's six. And we're just going to tie that off right there. You have three or four good wraps, one in front, and cut it. So now we're going to take a little bit of Angora, and this is going to be a little bit of a of a prop because I, when I was originally playing around with this fly, I played around with a lot of different props. If you make it too full, then all of the ostrich collapses in a vortex behind uh, the fly, and it's just, it doesn't come out right. So a little bit of angora is soft enough to cushion that uh, and, and allow everything to still flow and not have everything collapse behind it. Because it is on the smaller end of things, um, we want it to swim properly. And so now we'll just take a little bit of Kraken dub. And when you're working with this stuff, just make sure that all the silly legs are all straight and there's no weird little loops and things like that. And if there are, you can just cut them out. And so we'll lay that down. That's just going to hold our ostrich. See, here's a really long little leg right there. We're going to take a nice little chunk of ostrich. Not too much, not too little. If you ever feel like <clears throat> if you ever feel like you've overdressed a fly, then tie one that's that's really sparse and then meet somewhere in the middle. That's I think that's probably the best way. If you feel like any of your stuff is overdressed, just do one that's super super sparse and then and try and make a mental note of what's right for you. Because an overdressed fly is not going to cast very well. A super, super sparse fly will generally fish pretty well, but you may not like it in your box, so it might not even get chosen. So anyway, we're going to take a little bit of Angora Goat on top of the Kraken and the ostrich. I'm just going to lay that down and everything's going to be at length. We're going to make ourselves a, a double loop. This is Vivas A dot. Always tying with Vivas A dot. And we're going to run that right up to the front. And we're just going to set this little loop back here because we already jumped ahead of ourselves. <laughs> Human moments happen. So, uh, what we forgot 
and this little fly, getting ahead of myself, which I have a tendency to do sometimes, is our silly legs. So we're just going to throw these in on the side, they're a little bump. And if you don't have a material clip on your vise, I highly suggest you get one because it helps. It's just a little spring and a rubber grommet, but it will help hold things out of the way. And not get caught up in, in stuff that you're doing later on in the fly, especially with silly legs. You can, you can use all sorts of things. But, we're going to add some flash into this fly. Should have some right here. We're going to add some flash in this fly. You can use crystal flash. You can use the crinkle mirror flash from Cascade Crest. I like that. That's typically what I use. We're going to throw a little flash in down the side. We're just going to cut that so it's not super long. That was two strands. One strand that I just cut in half. And now we're ready for our loop. So we'll pull this back out. Throw in our Angora, and then we'll throw in our little sandwich of Kraken and Ostrich and Angora. And I really don't like the Ostrich to be super long, so I'll come in here, and without cutting out that, without cutting out the Kraken dub, I'll just slide my scissors in between it and cut out the ostrich that I don't necessarily need. That way we still keep all those little silly legs and a little bit of flash. We can sacrifice a little bit of Angor goat. Because that's just kind of helping hold everything. Giving us that little bit of spiky... buggy kind of effect. Just kind of pick that out. And now we're just going to make one turn in front of another. You don't have to really pack any of this in because we're going to have to chew up some space here. So there's our little Angor bump. Kind of our body, if you will. And then we're looking for about two turns, typically two turns of ostrich. It's not turning yeah, it's just right, right beyond two turns. And so now we've left ourselves roughly three three or four millimeters worth of headspace. Right? Got a little bump, silly legs, a flash, our ostrich, all the good things. Now we're just gonna cap it off with a little bit of rabbit. One to kind of hide these little bumps, and, and two give some contrast in this fly, a black head. So again. I'm going to make a double bump, and, and when I was first playing around with this fly, I tried to do everything in all in one loop, and it just comes out messy, and you can if you want, but I just, you know, I've, I found this to be a little bit easier for me, and if you get too much rabbit in the loop initially, then it can really, it'll block water, it, it'll... It'll push so much water that everything just won't flow right. So we really want the rabbit head sparse. So we're really looking for two to three turns at most. And if it's really thin, then 
three is fine. But we don't. We certainly don't want this too full. Just spin our rabbit up. And you might notice I'm not using any kind of dubbing wax with any fur. I don't use any dubbing wax, whether it be Arctic Fox or Rabbit. I don't use any dubbing wax with Angora. I don't either. We didn't spin that one enough. That's perfect. So really a thin head is what we want. Just enough to, to cover that space of about three millimeters. And tie that off. Cut our thread. Jump forward in front of the eyes. Give a couple of wraps. Whip finish. Get everything out of the way. When we're working with crazy glue and fur of any kind, we just want to be really careful, or feathers for that matter. Just want to be really careful not to get that crazy glue on any of that stuff, especially rabbit or marabou. Because it will clump and it will never swim right. Uh, get nice, good coverage with that with your glue and go out fishing there you go there's a little summer steel heady uh, winter comeback fly what I also like to do is after I finish tying the fly I'll just hold it straight up and I'll clip those little legs at slightly different lengths and there you go there's the Avenger.